My grandmother used to say, life is hard. I never understood what she meant by that. But now that I'm older, I know. Life is tough, especially for women in my village. This is my story, but it's also the story of every woman I know. This is my sister, Yarudi. If it wasn't for her, only God knows. Yarudi! Yarudi! And that's my father, Mr. Bulldozer. When the bulldozer is awake, everyone trembles in fear. Because you never know what he wants to wreck that day. Our primary job in the family as women is to please him. And it's an impossible job, trust me. Our needs, our joys are secondary to his whims. We wash, cook, clean, all else just to please him. And that's the life all the women in my village know. From the time they can walk. We're used to it. So for the most part, we don't mind it. We do our part and hope to get married to a kind man. Like my beloved Osoro, he makes me happy. He's like, he's my peace and like my home. Hey, Gwaringi. And then I can go to me. Hey, look, I'm stuck one hour. Hi. Yeah? Hi, yeah. Again, get it. Get out of here. Give it here 20. Yes, get it. Give it 20. Give it here 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 20. Yeah? It's changing a year. Yeah. It's quite a change. Oh, my God, I'm going to give it here 20. Give it here 20. No, I'm not going that scream is my cue that the bulldozer is awake. My job is to protect my sister. I don't understand why my mom stays in this marriage. She says I'm too young to understand. Maybe she's right. Because I don't. 
But right now, I must get my sister to safety. Away from our own father. Was become the wolf at the door. A wolf that wants to eat its own. That is the life I was born into. Okay. 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 Sinisabi. But Yani iri yana ndiri kokubota yani bwe kosenga ki abana bana ngai bali lakini eto nyakora gira nchikuri abana lakini kora gira bana bana bali sikali bwe tunanga nti tabama ena etuka banjeti usana koro bwate ngumpa inona bantu ali moko na yakitari mwati toro bokuma muri kala ira wa isete goku iko bana ndamenda gira bana bana bali sikali abana bai sikki abana sinya ko botuko usana ko Mukumanga Okay. Hello, <laughs> Akin <laughs> 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 
Alingo ira para nyo ara gaki no naga sabu nyo sabu siri no naga 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 sabu siri no Orang biasa saya dia matukan anak kirim kait tu korus saya sering dia orang tak kira cipas. Anak kita aku, tinggal nak aku yang dah sekolah di tu kau dia mati, entah buat apa sih kau ini. Eh, naik naik yang tu. Aku mana, aku kuli ke ni dah apa apa biasa. Sangga api. Entah kira kau anak cipu mana mampir mam. Naa aku dah beti. Aku dah beti lagi ni mana. Umur dia ni aku senyum kira kau. Tatu minum nuri apa ini yang kau bi. Orang cina aku tuh yang borak quick, tu aku ni arah kamu arah segan tu pun naik tu. Yang ni muna aku andora ika, ibu, muna aku andora ibu. Kau ada kau dah yola, cuma kau nak nayar aku senang aja. Nje, tato muna tu yang borak tu kau orang nak dengan nene cebu kini risal, tinggal tak cok, istar taro tinggal cok. Anje, anje ayah aku kau apa anje ni dengan goi tu, goi tu, goi tu pun naik tu. Ah, kau muka kau naik kau macam cok, tapi mama. Wana ayam tu muka ni dah ayam nak tu kau ni seri, wana anje ras mangen tu school. Tak ada mana kau yang ada. Tiada yang jadi kerja di kau ini juga. Kau mana kau yang dah lama. Kan, nama orang cinta itu. Ayah kau ni bukan orang di sekolah. Jadi kau ni sebab sangat batik. Kau ini dah cikun, hati. Kau ada kau siapa siapa bukan kau bukan. Hello, my name is Jeros Kibagendi from Million Hearts. And my name is Bella Masanya from International Solidarity Foundation. Amazing. I think from this first episode, Bella, we, we see a couple of things happening in, in different um, lives of every character. Yeah. And some of these things are things that are happening in our communities every other day, uh, with the children, with the women, with the men. Absolutely. Uh, I'd like to know um, what sparked you when you, you, know, you watched this first episode. I think for me the first thing that absolutely uh, caught my mind was the monologue, the beginning of the monologue. Um, the, you know, she's fetching water and talking about how uh, she feels like her job is to look after her sister, take care of her sister. And she says, you know, her life is not any different from that of every other girl or young woman that she knows. And so the thing that really um, came to my mind is how generally as a society, as soon as young girls are born, we train them to be wives. We train them, they're, they're, they're girls, but they're still wives in training. They're doing all the household chores, they're pitching water. At her age, she's still um, of school going age, but in her mind, you know, she's thinking about my job is to look after my sister for my brother and father, and my mother who did not make a good choice. Because she says, why did my mother I don't understand why she's in this. Yeah, so the, 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 the responsibility to ensure that the younger sister is safe has obviously been relegated to her. So instead of you know being a young, happy guy, just playing with her friends and uh, you know minding about school, she's now doing all these household chores, but at the same time, um, you know, playing the, the, the part of being an adult, the work that is supposed to be carried by the father and the mother. So that for me was really what, what, what. I have to confess, I was, I was crying at some point and I was watching it last night. It was so touching, but it portrays exactly what happens, especially in, in, in rural areas, in villages, that is exactly what happens. She's fetching water, you know, before she even goes to school. Um, it's a struggle to, 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 to even think about being in school itself because of everything else that's, that, that's out here. And then you've also, you know, mentioned about the characters and, and, and the roles that come out. Obviously, he is, is the, the, the gender-based violence. Yeah. And from the husband to, to, to the mother, she's, she's, he's called bulldozer, yeah. ruling with an iron fist. Yeah. It's still fear into the mother, cause her into submission. She doesn't even, you know, have a chance to speak back because as, as soon as she speaks back, you know, she's being asked, uh, you know, why are you talking, why are you talking back? Uh, 
me asking questions is inviting me to talk back. You want to say something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I feel like before before you even cross over to the gender based violence, yeah. I, I feel like um, these responsibilities that this girl has, they take away a lot from her childhood. She ends up not being the child that she is supposed to be, and even when she looks like she's a bit older. But you see, we kids sometimes forget that actually, even when we go to the age of 18 as a child. Yeah. So even when this, this girl gets to 14, 15, 16, and you know, she's, she looks a bit bigger in terms of her body size, a lot of responsibilities come in, and that, those responsibilities take away from her as a child, and she does not get um, the opportunity to have, you know, even her personality development, her social, her social life, mm-hmm. and her education life develop as it should as a child because these responsibilities take away from that. And within the first episode, it's just, you know, what you just said, it's just a, a, a cycle that never ends. Cause, because within the first episode, there's the scene where the father, the husband is asking the mother, where are my children? Mm-hmm. Why are you here and my children are not here? Where are my children? When we actually send them away. Exactly. And so what that communicates is it is up to the mother. It is the responsibility of the mother to know where are the children, what are they doing, ensure they're with the father when the father needs them. But at the same time, she's trying to make sure the husband has food on the table because if there's no food on the table, that's going to cause more problems. You know, it will invite more beatings, more violence. But at the same time, it's like you never know what could go wrong. You're just in a state of dilemma, in a state of people, you don't know where the violence is going to come from. So here we have this young girl who feels, you know, my younger sister is my responsibility. But at the same time, as the plot continues, we see the mother, you know, also being bestowed um, the role of looking at, so she's already had the children in terms of like having productive role, carrying the child, right? And then the child bearing. And then now the child bearing again, is her responsibility entirely. So those are three roles within the reproductive aspect of a woman. Again, just a cycle. The, the young girl, you know, if, 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 if um, the situation does not change, she'll just end up making the same choices or ending up in the same position as the mother, unfortunately. Well, absolutely. And um, I think it's, um, it's up to us now to realize that it's actually a social, a social responsibility. Yes. It takes all of us as a community to start thinking how how better can we do this? And um, I think in subsequent episodes we're going to delve deep into you know, gender-based violence and other things that are coming up in, in this uh, piece so we get to elaborate uh, what it is versus what it's supposed to be and what should we do. I like that you actually, you know, now bring it back to the society because I want people to self-reflect on their own, especially parents and especially mothers. How many of us can truly say we're not training our young girls to be wives and mothers in the future? How many of us are giving the same responsibilities, especially household responsibilities, to our young girls and as well as our young boys? What, what are we really instilling into their minds? That our young boys are, are going to grow into men who go out into the market, so the roles we give them within the household are actually outside of their household, and we're ensuring that our young girls and daughters are remaining within the household. So, a point of reflection. <laughs> well, this is a chance for you to self reflect, I think. <laughs>